Well, the search dogs uh, confirmed uh, what uh, was found already, that uh, the scent of uh, the missing gal was uh, near the top. And this, this is uh, pretty much a standard procedure. When, when that happens, we bring in a secondary dog to confirm the first dog's findings. So you believe she's under the dog? We don't know. Uh, as a result uh, of uh, some of the uh, findings here, we'll see uh, where we go from here. Uh, and make an assessment as to whether or not divers are going to be uh, deployed into the water today or not. Based on what you found so far, finding her clothes underneath this dock, do you believe that she was physically here or could her clothes have been washed to this point? Her clothes were not found under the dock, they were found on top of the dock. Okay. And they were dry. So yeah, we think she was uh, standing on top of the dock at one time. So you said that the scent is coming from underneath the dock specific specifically? This couldn't just be the, the clothes that were there or her previous scent being there when she was on top of the dock? Well, that's part of the unknown, and that's why we're making an assessment right now uh, as to uh, where we go from here. Uh, we've had uh, people out here searching this area of the river before, and some of what we're doing today is uh, we can some of the same findings, uh, in some cases it's secondary and third searches. So it's, uh, it's not What's the status of the foul play and, and where are you guys going uh, next here um, with this investigation? Well, there's been no indication whatsoever that there has been any foul play at this point. Uh, there's nothing to indicate that. We're searching. We've uh, had over 100 uh, volunteers, trained volunteers, to, to search the area today. As the time goes by, and she's been missing for more and more time, what is your fear? Well, obviously, you know, the longer she's out here, she's exposed to the elements. She's a young gal. She doesn't know the area. Uh, she has a diminished uh, mental capacity. Those are all concerns. Uh, we're very concerned about her welfare, and that's why we're uh, acting with uh, so many people involved in really pretty unprecedented search of the area for, for this gal. Oh, go ahead. Are you still determining whether or not you would send dive teams in to look? Yeah, I've, I've relayed the information and uh, they're making that assessment. Uh, there are people that know the uh, technical aspects of the water and of uh, what to expect under these kind of conditions. Although today it seems like a nice sunny clear day, the water's so murky, it's so fast, it's high, a lot of spring runoff. So uh, those are assessments that uh, experts uh, will make. Could that happen today? It's a possibility, okay. yes. And as for uh, you, the status of this search, I mean, is it, are you considering it or classifying it as a recovery mission at this point? Uh, have you not lost hope that she is alive? No, Tell it, us is, that. it is not a recovery mission. In fact, uh, we have a lot of hope uh, to find her alive, hope to find her well. And we have a lot of people deployed uh, looking for her, uh, thinking that she is still alive. You said this was an unprecedented search. Is this the largest that you can remember of this type? Of it's one of the largest. It certainly is. And part of it has to do with uh, where we are, the geography, the terrain. It calls for additional resources. And I can't think of uh, many law enforcement agencies across the United States that are large enough to handle something of this size uh, by themselves. And that's why we call it so many different outside assets. Thank you, Detective. Appreciate it.